turning around for me. This is my testimony. My testimony. Jesus, you have turned my life around. I'm a living testimony. I'm so blinded by your grace. You are the truth that lights my way. Everyone's asking how I'm smiling, waiting to make me smile. Lord, you've given me my freedom, so I will sing and testify. So in the name of Jesus, I am free. Oh, yeah, yeah. So in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I've got my freedom. Jehovah, you have broken every chain, oh, and you gave me a new name. With the way you changed my story, I just really can't explain. So when they ask me how I made it, I'll just point and say it's you. Cause I'm standing here today, cause I've been delivered by the truth. Also in the name of Jesus. is a wonderful something I'm just saying thank you I'm free. Oh, yeah, sing a new song. Claim your freedom. Testify. Testify. Claim your freedom. Claim your freedom. Testify. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord God. I've got my Praise the Lord. And I will sing of your goodness. And I will sing of your mercy. Good morning. We welcome you here at our online service at Reach Church. We're so glad to have you. I hope you're ready to get your praise on. Why don't you gather your family members together if they're there with you? If you're by yourself, you're not really by yourself because God is right there with you. And we pray that the presence of God come right in your living room as you're praising God and lifting up his name. Why don't you go ahead and click your share button so that other people can join in on our live service. And we have with us this morning Bonnie and Justin Beal leading praise and worship. So why don't you stand to your feet and get ready to give God praise. Good morning, good morning. We're so excited to be here with you guys. Welcome to Reach Church. We welcome you online for anyone who's tuning in and watching us. Um, this morning, if, if you don't recognize us, we're Justin and Bonnie Beal. We're just a part of the Reach family that loves to come and serve here. And we are so excited to worship with you guys this morning. So today, wherever you are this morning... Whatever's happened this week, we just pray that you would shut off every distraction. Grab your kids, grab everyone in your house, grab whatever you need, all the people, and let's just enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise. It's as simple as that. He asks us to come and just enter with praise. And so, Father, we give you praise this morning. 
not for anything that we see happening in our lives, not for the blessings that you've given us, not for maybe the storms that we've gone through, but Father, we give you praise because you are never changing. You are always good. You are always faithful. And declare that this morning over your home, over your family. Declare that he is faithful over it all. Jesus, you are so faithful. You remain the same. You never change. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, you are good. You are good. Come on, let's sing it out. And I have heard a sound coming on the wind, changing hearts and minds and healing brokenness. I feel a generation breaking through despair. I hear a generation full of faith declare. And our song it will be that out of the darkness we will 
declare his goodness right now in your homes. Just declare that he is good. Father, you're faithful. You're so faithful to us, God. Jesus. You know, so, so many times people are often looking for all those things that we talked about. They're looking for faithfulness. They're looking for hope. They're looking for freedom and healing. They're looking for joy and love and peace in life. And the reality is that we can't search for those things. We can't search for peace itself. We can't search for love itself. It's only found in Him. And I just lately, I've been, I've been speaking to my kids about the fruits of the Spirit. And I can't explain it to them any other way than true love and true joy and peace is just found in Jesus. I can compare it to things that maybe make us feel those things for a moment. But everlasting love, everlasting peace, that's found in Jesus. It's because it's who he is. The Bible calls him the Prince of Peace. When he spoke to the storm, he said, peace, be still. And it obeyed him. That storm obeyed him because he was peace. And he spoke to the storm and it listened to his command. And this morning and every day of our lives, Jesus longs for nothing but to just know you. And for you to know him. And so this morning, if you're looking for a miracle, you're looking for a breakthrough, you're looking for peace in your life, you're looking for joy in your life, just search for Jesus. Just seek him this morning. And we're not seeking him because we want those things. We're seeking him just because he is good, just because he is who he says he is. He is Jesus. Father, we seek you just for you. we thank you for being such a good father that when you walk into the room when you when your presence comes in it's just the evidence of you being there and everything changes father with just one look with just one touch you are all we need Jesus it's you Jesus it's you we seek your face we seek your heart Lord Jesus, we let you in, we let you in, we let you in, God. We let you in. Oh, we give you permission. We open up our hearts and let you in.
What a powerful and anointed time of worship. Thank you to Bonnie and Justin. We are so grateful for you and how you've been such a blessing to our ministry over the years. We pray God blesses you in an extraordinary way and opens up the windows of heaven, pouring out a blessing you won't have room enough to contain. We thank you, thank you, thank you. They will be with us for the entire month of July, re, uh, you know, uh, doing praise and worship and leading us in praise and worship. So we welcome you on our online service here at Reach Tampa, located in Lutz, Florida, just outside of New Tampa. You can also visit us online at reachtampa.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. Our services will be broadcasted live on YouTube and on Facebook each Sunday at 9.55 a.m. So we invite you to join us each week, and we love you, and we're so grateful to have you with us out there praising God and getting into the Word of God each and every service. We also have started our weekly Bible study on Thursday evenings online at 7 p.m. on Facebook. We will also have uh, that put on our YouTube channel afterwards. But that's 7 p.m. on Facebook live 
Uh, we have our online Bible study. Have your Bible there, your notepad, and your pen, and get ready to dive in the Word of God on those evenings. Also, we ask you to go ahead and click share on Facebook and share on your YouTube page with family and friends so that they can join us each and every morning and that you can spread the word of what God is doing here at Reach Church Tampa. I also have another announcement um, to, to make is that we're going to have Jeff Edwards leading praise and worship for the entire month of August. Wonderful, wonderful man of God. Led praise and worship at a previous church we used to attend, and he's powerful and anointed. So that's going to be a wonderful time, and you're in for a treat in the month of August. So are you ready for the word of God? Back to Pastor Brian for the message, a powerful message that he has for you this morning. And I ask God to bless you abundantly as you receive his word and you go deeper in what he has for you. Amen. Love you. How's this now? There we go. We're up. <laughs> so as I was saying, Psalm 118, verse 24, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Verse 25, save now. I beseech thee, O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. And the Amplified adds, and grant us success. Who says, I'll take that? Every hand ought to go up. I got my feet in the air. Now prosperity. Now success. If you want it, when do you want it? Now? Now. When is now? Right now. Not later. Not next week. The delay is over. You can place a demand on the word now prosperity. Prosperity is having what you need when you need it. It's health and healing. Wholeness, completeness, soundness, grace, mercy, favor, everything that you need, it's all wrapped up into salvation. So when we pray this prayer, this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Thank you. So this was a little technical hurdle, but earlier today, on our way down here, we had another hurdle to get through. Well, we have a little eight-mile, two-lane uh, two road to get to the uh, interstate to drive down to the church. But we got halfway through this, and the road was totally blocked off. We were running right on time. Honey, uh, 
it's time to go. My wife was right punctual, right on time. We left the house exactly. We know, been here several times. We know exactly how long it takes to get here. But this road was blocked off, and it was, it was a pretty bad accident. They had the medical examiner there, so nobody was traveling on this stretch of road. So we had to turn around, do a, a U-turn. Sometimes in life, you're going to have to do a U-turn. But the Lord always makes a way. Amen? And so even though that I needed to be here at 930 to do everything that we need to do prior to going on air, we took the longer route and got here about 15 minutes to uh, 10, quarter to 10. But we arrived in time, we arrived intact, we arrived safely. Can you say amen? Now, the other night we were even driving on the road. And I know we're continuing on the series here of the anointing. And the anointing is here also for your protection. It's there for, uh, for, for everything, for the times that you need it, it's there. And so I'm here to tell you, it was uh, probably, what, 12 o'clock at night, Jody? It was... Uh, it was uh, 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 very dark out, um, and uh, there was some foolishness going on in the highways. I don't really like to drive in the highways at night, but there was some foolishness going on. A couple of cars racing, using the other cars in the highway as a, a slalom course, zing in and out, follow me, tag, catch me if you can kind of a thing. I didn't know what was going on behind me, but... A black car came flying and cut right in front of me, and then the exit was there, and he darts off the exit. Well, he made it off the exit, but the car following him also cut me off. But he didn't make the exit. He hits the guardrail, slams into it on the other side. The car uh, scrapes the whole side swipes, the car all the way down for uh, uh, several yards until he lost control, the car swerves, and then he heads head on into the, the other guardrail opposite, and um, the car was just smashed. Now, in the middle of this, two cars coming just like this, using a slalom course, we were totally untouched. Can you say Amen supernatural divine protection is available from the Lord. Amen. And no matter where you go, no matter what you're doing, in you're coming in and you're going out. He's always, he's the way maker as we were singing earlier. And so um, I just give thanks and praise to the Lord for that right now. Can you say amen? Amen. The anointing of the Lord breaks the yoke of bondage the anointing of the lord sets the captives free the anointing of the lord brings rivers in the desert the anointing is falling on me the anointing is falling on me. Just close your eyes right now. The anointing of the Lord breaks the yoke of bondage. The anointing of the Lord sets the captives free. The anointing of the Lord Brings rivers to the desert. The anointing is falling on me. The anointing is falling on me. It's falling on you. Everyone who's watching by way of internet right now, Facebook Live, all the technical media, 
television, satellite, all around the world right now. There's no distance in the realm of the spirit. Everything that's going on here in this meeting, you have access to because of the anointing. Can you say amen? amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to turn to a favorite passage of mine. And, uh, you know, if you go to the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then go to the book of Acts, you're going to see everything that the anointing does. And the anointing is in action through the works of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And so the Gospels are a perfect example of how the anointing flows, that you can receive by the laying on of hands. You can place a demand on the anointing yourself, the Word of God. And so let's see a couple of examples here of the anointing of God found in Matthew, or excuse me, Mark chapter 5. Let's go to Mark chapter 5. And um, it's on page 1288, if you have the same Bible as me. But we start off in, in Mark chapter 5 with devils being cast out. Now, there, was a, there was a man who dwelt among the tombs, as we see this in verse 13. I'm just going to quickly go through this. He could not even be held by chains. And uh, he was tormented day and night. And he was crying out and cutting himself. And then along comes Jesus and the devil, man full of devils, comes running over to him and actually announces that his name is Legion before he has many devils. Not just one, many devils. And the Lord cast the devils out of him and they requested that they just go into the swine. The herd of swine is there. When the devils came out, 2,000 swine ran down over the hill and drowned in the lake. The anointing is there to break every bondage that Satan has tried to put on you. Can you say amen? It doesn't matter what has happened in your life, how he got into this terrible condition of having all of these demons tormenting him so that he's cutting himself, he's running around naked, and nobody could do anything about it except the anointing of God was able to break every fetter. As we continue on here with Mark chapter 5. He wanted to go on with Jesus, but Jesus said to him in verse 19, Go home to thy friends and tell them the great things the Lord has done for you and that he had compassion on you. <laughs> That's the love of God. That's the anointing of God. Love and compassion for the people. Can you say amen? And so the Lord's not willing that any should perish. The Lord's not willing that we're in bondage. The Lord is not willing that we are bound up uh, because of Satan. He has come to set us free. And those who have been set free, free indeed. We all go on here to verse 21. Jairus' daughter the ruler of the synagogue. And I'll start at verse 21. And when Jesus passed over the ship to the other side, much people gathered to him. And he was near the sea. And behold, there come one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell down at his feet. When Jairus saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. 
and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay hands on her, that she may be healed, that she may live. The anointing, the anointing is there even transferred by the laying on of hands. He asked, will you come and lay hands on her and let that anointing from you flow into her body because it's not well with my daughter. Even at the point of death. You may have some things in your life that don't look like they're living, that they're not prospering, that they're not flourishing, that they're not producing. But the anointing is there to bring those things right back to life again. So let's see what Jesus does. He says... Again, I'll repeat on verse 23. Pray thee and come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. And Jesus went with him. Much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years and suffered many things of many physicians and spent all she had and, and was uh, no better but grew worse. When she heard Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garments. Well, imagine this, a throng of people, a multitude, a great number of people, all coming and pressing in on Jesus. Whether to just slap him on the back, say hello, hey, uh, my name is, and introduce themselves. You know what people do with a... a let's just say in today's world a celebrity status comes into town everybody wants to see and look and and get close so here's this throng of people but here is a woman that had an issue of health in her body for 12 years she went to all the physicians She spent all that she had. She didn't get better, but grew worse. I don't know what condition you're in. Maybe a physical body. Maybe attack on your physical body. I don't know what the issues. I don't know what the doctors are saying to you right now. And everyone looking um, and watching uh, this broadcast right now. But I want your faith to rise up like this woman's faith rose up. And you're going to see what she did. She placed a demand on the anointing. She said, verse 28. She said. She said. If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. The anointing is voice activated. Can you say that after me? The anointing is voice activated. You have to speak it. You say it. You believe it. And you act on it. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. This is amazing. Can you imagine going to all the doctors? They have no solution. There is no solution to the problem. Went from one doctor to the other, probably referred to another doctor. And you know, in today's uh, medicine, I'll just tell you this. Um, I have very little faith. I, I know the doctors are here. They mean well. The nurses are here. But let me just go out into this. The pharmaceutical companies right now, 
have these drugs out there and all they want to do is sell their drugs to the point that every doctor that if they prescribe a certain drug doesn't matter you know name one I don't doesn't really matter um, they will get a kickback or a bonus for uh, the more uh, prescriptions of this they write the doctors actually uh, receive money back from the pharmacies so it's not really driven by the, uh, the medical community any longer it's driven by a much bigger uh, machine that's out there I experienced something in my body that um, there was a blood clot I came back after ministering and being on television in Las Vegas did two programs out there in the flight back home and about a week or so later a couple weeks later I had a blood clot in my left leg turned in I had some pulmonary embolisms they, the blood clot started to move and fill up in my lungs well I recognized something was wrong I said to my wife Jody I said please take me straight to the to the, the hospital we got to check this out make sure that it's not a blood clot well it was and um, three days in the hospital three and a half days in the hospital and put me on blood thinner but then I said what is causing this because this was a second time around and so they put me on one test after another test to go to this doctor and go to that doctor and do, I mean I had so many needles stuck in my arms at one point they couldn't even draw blood out of my arms anymore both of my veins are just like that's it they had enough my body shut down and I said that's it I'm done after six months they still did not know what is causing this so I could relate to this lady She spent all she had, went to every doctor, they had no solution. But we know the great physician. Can you say amen? His name is Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. The great physician. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 If I may just touch his clothes, I shall be whole and straightway. The fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, verse 30, immediately knowing in himself that virtue or power, dunamis or uh, uh, <laughs> the anointing, <laughs> oh, the anointing had gone out of him. And he turned about into the press of the throng of the people and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciple said, Do you see if the multitude thronging you? And you ask, Who touched me? Everybody was touching, but nobody placed a demand. One woman placed a demand on his ability. Say this after me. The anointing, the anointing. has the ability... To destroy, to destroy every bondage, to break every yoke, break every, yoke. every hindrance every that I have going on in my life. The anointing, the word of God, is the only solution. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so virtue, the anointing, power had gone out of him she placed a demand on the word Jesus was the word she placed a demand on the word and she received exactly what she said if I just may touch the hem of his garment I shall be whole and she pressed through and grabbed a hold of the anointing and that power, that demand on his ability, that supernatural was applied to her natural situation. She was totally made whole. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us that she was healed. 
she was made whole. That means not only did she receive the healing, the issue of the blood dried up, the fountain dried up immediately, but supernaturally, I don't know how this happened, but all of the finances that she had spent seeing the many physicians was also restored back to her because wholeness is completeness, soundness. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. You can have your health and still be broke. Or you can be, you know, uh, uh, very rich and not have your health. But to be made whole is you have it all. It all came back together. Amen. It all came back. Amen. Everything in her life that she had gone through, the Lord restored, restored unto her the years. I'm just telling you, this is a very powerful scripture here. I love, uh, I love uh, Mark chapter 5. From the demons to now healing. But watch this. Remember what Jesus was up to. First, the demand came from Jairus. Come lay your hands on my daughter. She's at the point of death. But he is interrupted by the woman who placed the demand. So now they stopped and now there's a delay. Now can you just imagine Jairus? Uh, Lord, you come into my house. Lord, you come into my house. He, he may have placed a demand. Let's get going. No, no, no. You, I, uh, you, me first. Me first. But the demand of this woman was so strong and the virtue that flew it out, he had never experienced that. Jesus hadn't experienced that. The such great faith out of a woman before caused him to stop. Your demand, no matter what's going on, is never too great that the Lord will ignore and pass you by to get to somebody else. Did you hear what I said? We serve a big, big God. We serve a great big God. He'll take care of all of the needs for all of the people. Uh, yes, Jairus, uh, <clears throat> I hadn't forgot about you. Let's uh, get on to the house here. So let me just uh, pick it back up here again. The woman, fearing and trembling and knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said to her, Daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. I'm going to read this from the Amplified. Verse 34, he said to his daughter, uh, to, the do uh, uh, to her, Daughter, your faith, your trust, your firmly relying and confidence in me, springing from faith in God, has restored you to health. Go into peace and be continually healed and free from your distressing bodily disease <laughs> once you are in contact with the anointing and you've got an answer to your asking like this woman did you can be continually restored in peace healed and free from distressing bodily disease. It never has to come back. The situation that you were just healed of and made whole, you never ever have to go back to that condition again. That's a great place to shout right there. Amen. If you're watching online right now, I'm telling you, give the Lord a mighty shout right now. He's a big, big God. And he hears your prayers and he's willing right now with the anointing of God to come into your house right now and touch you and heal you of that plague. Amen. The anointing of the Lord breaks the yoke. 
of bondage. The anointing of the Lord sets the captives free. The anointing of the Lord brings rivers in the desert. The anointing is falling on me. <laughs> In, uh, <laughs> In verse 35, and while he spoke, there came a ruler from the synagogue's house, a certain uh, with, uh, man who said, um, your daughter is dead. <laughs> Don't trouble the master any further. Whose report are you going to believe? Did you just, Jairus, believe that the Lord can heal your daughter? And he's coming to your house and lay hands on your sick daughter, who's at the point of death. But a report comes that she died. Don't bother coming. The wailing is starting at the house already. You know, there are already people that were were prepared and in place uh, to uh, prepare her for a funeral. But Jairus had faith in the anointing to raise her back up again. Because as you see, if we continue reading on to this, you're going to see that he had to cast out the, the, the people from around her, the people of unbelief. But I want to read this in the, in the Amplified. And it says, verse 35 in the Amplified, While he was still speaking, there came some from the ruler's house who said to Jairus, Your daughter has died. Why bother or distress the teacher any further? Verse 36. Jesus, overhearing but ignoring what they said. Jesus heard the report, but he ignored what they said. The report came back negative. She no longer lives, but she is dead. But Jesus said... Ignoring what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear. Only keep on believing. Ha <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. Only keep on believing. Only keep on believing. Do not be seized or gripped with fear in the situation. Even though you believe in the word it does not look good you get a worse report Jesus overhearing what the report is that came to Jairus he says hey forget about it ignore it I'm telling you do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear only keep on believing. You know, there are hindrances to the anointing. And some of the hindrances are a bad report, fear, faith contaminated. Fear will bring contamination to your faith. Uh, are you going to put more trust and belief in the Word of God and His ability? Or are you going to put more weight and trust in the bad report? That's a decision everyone's got to make. Oh, yeah. Well, it's getting worse. Oh, man. She was, she was bad off before, but now it's hopeless. And the people have all gathered around. They were gathered around anyways, but now it looks like instead of having a resurrection, we're having a funeral.
The word of God is right there to strengthen you at the time you need to be strengthened. The word of God is right there to reinforce his ability and the anointing to totally turn around that situation. The word of God is right there to do what the word says he'll do. I'll go to your house and we will lay hands on her. But I want you to do something along the way as we find out here in verse 36. You're going to have to ignore that report. You're going to have to keep yourself free from alarm, gripped with fear, and keep on believing. That's your job. Keep on believing, no matter what the situation looks like. Now remember this. Jairus was there with the throng. He joined the throng. There was a throng of people. And he was there when everybody was traveling and moving with Jesus as he's trying to walk and get to Jairus' house. But there was a woman who stopped along the way. And Jairus was right there and witnessed everything that just happened. That this woman placed a demand on him to be able to make her whole. Jairus watched the whole thing. But Jesus, in verse 36, made sure that he wasn't going to forget about what just took place, get his back eyes back on the natural after he had just witnessed the supernatural and be able to put his eyes on the natural and then allow fear, doubt, and unbelief come in. The anointing is voice activated. And when you say, come, lay your hands, the belief was Jesus is going to be able to heal her. Do not allow any other report come in to the contrary. And he came into the house of the ruler of the synagogue. And there was a tumult. There was a great sound. And they wept and they wailed greatly. And then when he was come in, Jesus said, Why do you make this an, an, a, a, a dough and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. So you're going to have a bunch of the world out there that's totally unbelieving heathens in the world. These people, these people, <laughs> back in those days, these people didn't even know Jairus' daughter. They may have heard of Jairus' daughter, but for the most part, these people that come in, uh, they're they're paid to mourn. <laughs> they uh, they were they were actually paid to come in and and put on a, a display of, of mourning and crying and no other purpose. They're, they're getting paid at the end of the day. That's how crooked and corrupt the world is. <laughs> They'll do anything to get a paycheck. They laughed him to scorn, but when he had put them all out, put everything out, get everything out that's going to hinder the anointing. Get everything out of the way that is going to uh, uh, cause a disturbance. Get all the fear, get all the doubt, get all the unbelief out. He take the father and put them uh, and the mother and the damsel and them that were with him and he entered in where the damsel was lying and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Tabethe kume, which is being interpreted damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway, there's that word again, straightway, the damsel arose and walked, 
for she was the age of 12 years old. And they were astonished with great astonishment. And he strictly commanded and warned them that no one should know this. And he expressly told them to give her something to eat. <laughs> now, you know, there's, there's a couple of similarities. We see straightway the fountain of blood dried up from the woman. And straightway here, as the Bible tells us, the damsel arose. The woman had the issue of blood for 12 years. This little girl was only 12 years old. Whether you're young, you're old, whether you're a ruler of great prominence, whether you're just an average person, the anointing's there for everybody. You just have to recognize the anointing, recognize the word of God, and allow the word of God to come work in your life. It's as simple as that. Read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Go to Acts, and you're going to see the transfer of the anointing, laying on of hands, uh, placing a demand, and don't allow any hindrances or blockages or negative reports or people around you to dissuade you from getting what you want from God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. I'm going to go to one other chapter. And it's found in Luke chapter 5. So we were in Mark 5, we're going to Luke 5. See, because we saw healings, we saw uh, being raised from the dead, we saw devils cast out with the anointing. Now we're going to see how the anointing brings supernatural provision. And this, is a, this is a wonderful, again, miracle of the anointing. And it came to pass that the people pressed in to hear the word. Here we are. We have an, another group of people, a large group, and another pressing on him to hear, another gathering of the word. And he stood by the lake, and he saw two ships standing out in the lake, and when the fishermen were gone out of them, they were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, one was Simon's, and he prayed that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people out of the ship. So there were so many people there that he used the lake to amplify his message. Because if anyone's been ever on the water before, you know your voice carries it. Those sound waves just bounce off of the water. So he was able to use this to amplify and uh, Peter, who was in the boat, um, was right there listening to the message that Jesus preached. And when he had done speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. So here's the anointing of the Lord. I don't know what message that he preached, but I'll guarantee you... He was preaching a messing of blessing and prosperity and increase and abundance. That's what the anointing of the Lord will bring into your life. Peter answered to him, Master, I've toiled all night. I've taken nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. When he had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish. And their net break, and beckoned their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help. And they came and filled both ships, so they began to sink. The anointing will bring you an abundance of prosperity. Even if you are in business right now, during this period of time of COVID-19 that has shut businesses down that you have been working and toiling but you have caught nothing you have nothing to show for your efforts you are a professional in your field but you have no results to show for it 
the anointing of the Lord, the, the direction of the Lord, the supernatural divine direction of the Lord, when it makes no sense, will produce in your life. Here's Jesus preaching a word. He's not a fisherman. He was actually brought up as a carpenter. It's in the middle of the day. You don't go fishing in the middle of the day. It's too hot. With the daylight, fish are able to see in the water a net, and they're not going to swim into it. At night, they can't see as clearly, so they can get right in. So it makes no sense to go fishing. But the Lord said, launch into the deep and get ready for a catch. Supernatural uh, direction equals supernatural provision in the time that you have worked and got nothing to show for it. Amen. The anointing of the Lord breaks the yoke of lack in your life. Amen. The anointing of the Lord brings provision in abundance. The anointing of the Lord fills your boat with the fishes. The anointing is falling on me. Provision. Provision. Supernatural divine provision. Abundance. Increase. I'll guarantee you this is the greatest day of fishing business that they've ever had. And you know, there were partners. And the amazing thing is, and I love this passage, and I, I actually break this down into to, to several messages, but <laughs> the partners didn't come. But the partners were partakers of the abundance. The, par the partners didn't go out and launch their nets. The Lord commanded them, bring your nets. Well, they had more than one net. Peter says, hey, <laughs> we fished all night. We caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I let down the net. But there was another boat, and there were more nets. And I'll guarantee you this, if anybody on the shore had a net, they could have thrown their, their net into the water and they would have also had a, a net breaking load as well. Because the anointing, the word of God is for everyone. It's for everyone's benefit. And when you partner with the anointing, you are a partaker of the abundance that the anointing produces. So the partners came, and uh, they helped rescue Peter, and they filled both boats. Can you say amen? You want your boat to be filled? <laughs> Hallelujah. That was a good time. If you're getting anything out of this message at all, I just encourage you, go ahead and sow into the ministry here at reach church the anointing that pastor brian has been talking about and i've had the pleasure of sharing even here today sow a seed put some action to the word put your faith out there stretch your faith sow into this place a demand on this anointing Place a demand on this word. Let it come alive. Let it become real to you. Let me tell you something. I first got this message when I was teaching children's church. And I don't know why it came to me at children's church. But the Lord says, take care of the children. And make your, 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 your gospel message so simple that a six-year-old will understand it. But then it developed into this. 
That fishing business had been operating at a net loss. Fished all night, caught nothing. No profit. Zero profit, nothing to show for it. A lot of work, toiling. They operated at a net loss. But the Lord turned it around into a net gain because he's concerned about your bottom line and your profitability. Because without increase and profitability, nobody can get blessed. Every single person, I'll guarantee you this, who was there shared in that prosperity of this because as we see, As we see here, they were all astonished for the draft of fishes which they had taken. Verse 10, and was also James and John, the son of Zebedee Fishing Company, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, fear not, from henceforth you shall catch men. You're going to be soul winners. Can you say amen? And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. They took their eyes off of the financial windfall and they kept their eyes on the anointing that provided it all for them. Can you say amen? amen. It's very important. When the blessing comes... We're not, we're enjoying the blessing, but we're not attached to it. We're attached to the one who blesses. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And they latched on to Jesus on the greatest day of prosperity they've ever had. That's what actually launched my wife and I into ministry. We had a windfall of finances, a business opportunity that we were in. We were traveling with Pastor Rodney and doing crusades, and we happened to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And Pastor Rodney and Pastor Eric was in the hotel lobby, and my wife and I just came in, and we got done talking and said, Pastor, from now on, you are never going to have to pay for Jody and myself. We have enough abundance and prosperity that we're going to take care of our own airfare, hotel, car rental, food, and offering money. Plenty of it. And we used our finances for soul winning. Fishers of men. Henceforth you shall be fishers of men. Ultimately, everything that we do has to have an eternal purpose. This life on earth is very, very short. Eternity is very long. And it's too long to be wrong. Jesus is coming very soon. And if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, if you've never made Jesus Lord and Savior of your life, if you once did, but... It's been a long time since you recommitted, rededicated. Your fire has gone out. Your, your embers are down to a, a small little ash. It's time to recommit, rededicate. It's time to make sure that you know that you know. That if you breathe your last breath right now, that you're going to spend your life in eternity with our Lord. So I want to say a simple prayer. And I want to pray with you and for you right now. Everybody watching out there by way of all the, the technical means right now. I want you to just lift your hands, close your eyes, and say this prayer with me, with your heart and your lips out loud. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me and cleanse me and set me free. Jesus, thank you that you died for me. Thank you, Lord, that you rose from the dead for me. Thank you, Father, that you're coming back again for me. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Give me a hunger for the things of God and a passion for the lost. 
and a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I turned my back on the world. I turn my back on sin, and I follow you, Lord Jesus. Today I am saved. I am forgiven. I'm on my way to heaven. I recommit and rededicate to my life to you, Lord Jesus. And on that day, I'll hear the words, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen. I'm so proud of you all. Now, if you prayed that prayer, get in touch with Reach Church. Pastor Brian Praster, Kanisha, they would really love to hear from you. And uh, don't forget, next Sunday, my wife is saying something. What is it, sweetheart? Come on up here, Jody. My wife has a special message. Welcome, Dr. Jody. If you have sickness in your body right now, I want you to reach out to the screen. I want you to place a demand on the anointing for healing, for miracles, right now in the name of Jesus. I speak to that spirit of diabetes in your body. I command diabetes out of your body now all of the effects the numbness in your feet the tingling in your feet the eyesight that is failing you i say eyes see in the name of jesus i command blood flow a restoration of your cells in your feet and in your body i speak to your insulin levels be normal now in the name of jesus i sp i speak to that foul devil of infirmity. I command infirmity off your body now by the power of the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I speak to those migraine headaches that take you out of commission for days. I tell you, in the name of Jesus, let go of God's children. In the name of Jesus, all inflammation goes, blood flow swells, swelling goes now, and the blood flow flow is normal throughout your brain in Jesus name I speak to confusion dementia and Alzheimer's you foul devil from hell in the name of Jesus go now like the woman who placed a demand on the anointing touching she said I I, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I would be healed. In the name of Jesus, reach out and touch the hem of his garment. There is no distance in the realm of the spirit. Be healed, be whole now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Don't go anywhere. Pastor Quinesha um, has uh, some more for you. We love you and bless you. And don't forget, see you all here next week. Reach Church. Wasn't that a powerful word? I pray that you are blessed by that and that everything that was spoken is planted in good seed cannot be scattered all over the place but it will go deep and deep on the inside of us bringing change restoration transformation anything that applies that you're believing God for in your life because the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword amen well we thank you for joining us we ask you to continue to click your share button uh, when you join us online so that your family and friends can also be a part of what God is doing here and we also um, ask you if you look on the on the screen right there we give you uh, different options in which you can give into the ministry and sow into the ministry if you believe in what God is doing here and you've been blessed by the ministry we encourage you to to take that opportunity and and sow your seed and we just pray that those who are sowing and continue to sow that it be multiplied in your life in every way everything you believe in God for that those things will come to pass in his right timing and those things you have need of that you will have in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Well, thank you so much again for joining us. We will see you next week. We love you. Have a blessed week.